Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. So today we have the snips because we are going to start pulling things out. Um, I had a great idea. Well, I feel like it's going to be a great idea. Um, so these plants, not this one, of course, it is dead. We're going to be taking that out today and uh, throwing it uh, probably in the trash. Probably not going to put that in my compost pile, but I had a great idea. These plants that are long and looking like trees that are dying, that are trying, they have um, suckers on them. And so I'm going to cut off the good suckers and plant them into the bags where I'm pulling out the tomatoes. Our first frost is not until November, and so I think I can get another flush of tomatoes before the season is over. Um, and the bags I was gonna use for potatoes, and so I'm not gonna plant 60 bags of potatoes. So I could get another round of tomatoes, I think, off of these suckers. So we're gonna cut the suckers off, cut the plants out, the dying ones, all around the garden out, and if we, whatever amount of suckers we have, we're gonna plant them into the other bags. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and I hope it works. <laughs> so, like right here, there's probably like four suckers on this plant. That's a pretty small one. Still gonna plant it somewhere. Right here, there's a sucker. And the good thing is, the top of these plants aren't diseased at all. So it's like I can get another tomato plant out of these and so that's what i'm gonna do and if you remember we planted suckers earlier this year and they performed well i'm gonna show you one of the suckers that we planted that is producing new slicer variety fruit and so that is my plan to get another round of tomatoes this isn't really a sucker it's the top of the plant but we're gonna try that too and it has some flowers on it. I will probably pull that flower off just to give the plant um, some time to get established. Now this does have a little bit of disease on it and we're just gonna pull that off and see what we could do. Never done this before, <laughs> full transparency. Um, but we're gonna try it this year and see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this whole plant out and then we're gonna put a sucker in this bag. Then we're gonna go look for some more suckers, get all of those replanted, pull out all of these bad tomato uh, plants and move on. <laughs> Anita, need a trowel and I get my nails done today. So this is a perfect day for me to do this so that I don't end up uh, messing up the new set of nails and I lost one. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to take the roots of this plant out. Going to make sure we get as much of it out as we can to give this next plant the ability to grow its roots. And I think this was this plant. So it was a brandywine yellow. So all of these will now be brandywine yellows, which is cool because I like them. They're delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and for this one, I am gonna pull the flower off, take off the bottom leaves because we want to plant it as low as we, as deep as we can. And this is where my new plant will start to come out, right there. So that'll keep the plant growing. Uh, the rest, like this, is a little sucker, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it, take it off, right here. And this is what I'm going to replant. Um, as this plant grows, I'll start to take these leaves off because you need some leaves for the sun to hit to help it to con continue to grow. And I am going to come back through and water them really well um, because that's what's going to get the new roots to growing and that's what we need and I'm gonna put this one in that bag take off the lower leaves 
right there you can see where the new plant will continue to grow and we're just gonna drop it in the bag as deep as we can and so that's one of the things that I'm gonna do today I'm gonna go ahead get that done and then I will be back to show you some of the other things that we're gonna do today <laughs> Okay, so this whole section is replanted with uh, suckers and tops of plants. So we will see what happens. You remember this came out of the compost pile, I think, or it may have been a sucker. This one definitely came out of the compost pile. Um, and so that's what we're doing right here. We're going to replant and maybe we can get some more tomatoes before the season ends. So this is not the best time for me to be doing this filming or moving these plants um, because it is hot outside right now uh, but I'm doing it because it's the time that I have so I ended up doing the bags here the front row over here I don't think they get enough Sun back here because of the sweet potatoes so I didn't do that um, right here a basil plant volunteered so I left it in that bag I did put a tomato in there too they grow pretty well together want to show y'all something and this <laughs> landed on my arm yesterday thankfully I didn't kill him um, because you know he's good for my garden but Lord when I found him on my arm I was like oh no <laughs> I hope y'all can see him can y'all see him there he goes right there Let's see if I can zoom in on him he landed on my arm yesterday y'all he eating something now I think he's fuzzy but you can see what I'm talking about. Anyway, he landed on my arm and I was hollering. My daughter came outside, but I didn't kill him. I just kind of swiped him off. I think it's a zipper spider. He probably has a uh, more real name. <laughs> That's what I'm calling him though. Oh, straw flowers just fell over. I need to tie them up. But in relation to what I was telling you about the uh, sucker that we put in. So like, yeah, it's, it's giving us tomatoes. Let me show you straw flower just fell over but look oh goodness the sun is absolutely horrible i hope y'all can see it because i can't but yeah that's the sucker it goes way up there and we're getting tomatoes off of it so amazing yeah it's a horrible time to be recording isn't it i have to get this work done and i wanted to be able to show you all so forgive me for the lighting but I gotta get it done. You know I normally try to record in, a, in good lighting. <laughs> so I pulled out all the tomatoes back here, cut the strings, cause we won't be putting any back here. They won't get light because of the roseo, which is growing nicely over here, but I don't have any roseo. I do believe they want more sun because let me show you the one over here where it's in full sun all day um, and it has roseo everywhere. The asparagus one of the strings broke so i need to tie that back up but see this one over here has them everywhere and uh it's in full sun all day so i'll remember that for next year i have pretty plants <laughs> they're very pretty but there aren't any roselle on it um so we'll remember that next year uh but let's get to moving we're gonna pull the watermelon out because it's not doing anything and it's time for me to start planning for fall anyway so we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. There are two tiny watermelon on the plant, but I don't think I'm gonna get anything from it. But let me show you my two tiny watermelon. <laughs> right there, here's a tiny one. Oh, gross. Yeah, they're gonna go. Um, and then there was one other tiny one over here, but we're just gonna pull it and give the vines to the chickens. They'll enjoy that. So the next thing we're gonna pull is that big old zucchini that's been in the walkway for quite some time now. Um, I don't think it's giving me any more zucchini. It has squash vine borer issues as we all would have expected from my area. Uh, so we're gonna pull that and give that to the chickens as well. So more for the ladies. She over there, I think that's Bertha. No, that's Betty. She over there dust bathing, y'all. Everybody else just kind of chilling. I just gave them food and water. 
that's Bertha. I know y'all be wondering where she at. She, she's living the thug life. Bertha, not, not interested? Got it. I wonder if we got any eggs last night. Nope, nope, nope. Come back. The door doesn't always stay shut. So they try to escape. <laughs> wonder if we got any eggs though. Maybe we didn't forget to check. I remember. I did. I did come and get those eggs last night. Did a lot of sleeping yesterday. Got confused. <laughs> that walkway has now reopened. That's a plus because I was stepping all over it. Uh, those squash did horrible. So I put some tomato suckers in there and I let them run up that trellis until the end of the season. I'm gonna go ahead and water those tomatoes. I'll keep doing more, something different and something else. And then I keep remembering, you gotta water them tomatoes in. <laughs> okay, so it got super hot outside and so we came inside. I also had a nail appointment, so I came in, changed, went to get my, get my nails done. But since it's so hot outside, hey, you, you wanna get out, get out get out of my video? <laughs> uh, since it's so hot outside, I'm gonna start my fall, my fall seeds, <laughs> apparently, with the dog. Um, so, I'm starting all of my seeds in flat trays like I did in the, um, for the summer, for spring or whatever. So I'm going to start them all the same way. I'm going to label it um, and then I'm going to let them germinate. And then if I need to move them up, I will move them up. But I think I have enough for what I plan to start for fall. Um, I told you in a previous video about my planting guide and someone asked where I got it from. I got it from my local feed and seed store. So if you have a local feed and store and seed, if you have a local feed and seed store near you, it may be worth it to go and ask them if they have a vegetable planting guide because it's very much useful. Um, hopefully today, once it cools off, we can plant the potatoes uh, because my last day on here says the 15th of this month. And so I want to go ahead and get them out. Uh, but today we're going to start our seeds. Another thing that people have asked about is where I got this container from. I got it from Michael's. It is a photo storage container. And so it comes with the outside container and then it has these little containers in it. They're for photos, but you can use them uh, for your seeds as well. So we are going to get right into it. Um, so basically, I have my seed starting medium. So I had some seed starting medium left. I'm going to start with this if and when I run out of it. I'm switching to this Miracle Girl organic performance mix. So I'll start in either. The dog is like all over the place, y'all. So I'll start in either. And since I had some left, I'm going to go ahead and use that to start. Because I just got my nails done, I have gloves. I don't have gloves for this specific purpose. My daughter is not feeling well, um, and so I gave her a COVID test earlier, but it'll work for this too, because I don't want to ruin my nails I just got done. So, all right, let's get this party started. I don't know where my labels are. Give me a minute, I, got, I gotta go find those. <laughs> so I found the labels. Didn't find the marker, so we're gonna try this marker and hope for the best. Uh, like I was saying, we're just gonna take the seed starting medium, and there's already water at the bottom of this, and we're gonna get it uh, absorbed. There was hot water in it, but I guess it's been sitting for a while, so it's not as hot as it was, but we're just gonna get the water absorbed into the seed start and mix okay so now we have our medium uh moist 
and I had enough water in it, but my camera went dead, and so here we are. <laughs> my battery went dead on the camera. So here we are. So I also, like I said, found my labels, didn't find my garden pen, so I'm hopeful that I don't lose the labels. I can tell what some plants are, not all of them. So basically, all I'm gonna do, this is a uh, fruit container. I think strawberries was probably in it. I'm just going to put some seed start and mix in it. And so this is a great way to start seeds and to reuse things because it already has drainage. You can close it, get the moisture. I'm going to wrap mine in plastic wrap, just like I did last year. I'm gonna grab some seeds. I'm gonna start with broccoli, cause I want lots of that. Now, it's a little late for Brussels sprouts for me, cause they take a long time. So we may not be starting Brussels sprouts. I think the dog is sick of me. So we got Green Magic from Johnny Seeds. We have a purple sprouting broccoli and a green Goliath broccoli. And so I'm gonna start, <clears throat> oh, and my broccoli, Rob. So I'm gonna start all my broccoli in this one container. I have a Wortham 29, but I don't think I'm gonna start that. So if you remember last year, I just took the labels and that's how I separated my spaces. So I need to get four in here. So that's one, two, three, and four. So just like that, I have four spots to start seeds. And I'm just gonna make sure my seed starting mix is pushed down good enough. The good thing for cold crops are um, one, two, three, four, yes. Is they're okay to have their roots disturbed. So we're gonna go ahead and write out our tabs. Green Goliath, oh no, oh, here we go. Green Goliath, I'm gonna stick that there. And then I'm just going to drop the seeds on the top and then I'm gonna cover them. You could dig the holes and stuff if you like. I'm not gonna do that because I also want a good amount of them. So I really just am using this to get them to sprout. And then I can replant them, pot them up if need be. And if need probably will be because it's still hot here. <laughs> All right, and so just like that, we planted some green Goliath. Not sure exactly how many seeds were in there, but that's how we're gonna do it. Next thing we're gonna do is the broccoli rob. Close it and wrap it with my saran wrap. This is going to keep the humidity and moisture in to help it to germinate. Your seeds don't need light to germinate. They need moisture. Most seeds don't need light to germinate. They need moisture and they need warmth in most cases. If your seed needs light, your packaging will tell you in most cases so don't forget to read your packaging. It is helpful information on the packaging. Uh-oh, my saran wrap is uh, doing a little something odd. I'm gonna just wrap it twice this way to make sure it's closed. So just like that, we've wrapped it and this is how we're gonna get it to germinate a little bit quicker. And so that's basically what I'm gonna do with all of my seeds to get them started. I really wanna put these out in the greenhouse cause it's just easier. But if you ain't new here, you also know that I'm terrible at going over to the greenhouse and watering stuff like I should. I'm not even gonna set myself up. <laughs> 
Not even gonna set myself up for that. I don't use any heat mats. I never have. Not for my tomatoes, not for my peppers. I don't, I put them downstairs. And I use shop lights as my lights. Um, so they have a little bit of heat to them already. Um, and it works out well. It's how I start my seeds all the time. So number three going in. I much more prefer starting my seeds this way because I don't feel like it takes as long as putting one in each container. And it kind of ensures that I start my seeds because <laughs> I can get real lazy sometimes. And I've been saying I was going to start these seeds, but, but I didn't. And it's not too late. So that's what, that's what matters. All right. So I'll see y'all when I'm ready to go back outside. I'm going to watch some TV and get these seeds started. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's a few days later. I am about to plant these potatoes out. It is the 15th of August. And in my area, they said it's the last day I can plant them. Oh, I'm putting my boot on the wrong foot. <laughs> so we're going to get these planted out. I just watered. It was supposed to rain. It looks like it's going to rain. It ain't rain, y'all. I have potatoes from the spring that I saved. I forgot my knife. I'm going to have to come back. That I saved. Um, I got more than I needed in the spring because I knew it was going to be hard for me to find them in the fall in my area. So that's what I did. I will tell you. It's muggy out here, we're fogging up. I will tell you, uh, some of the sprouts are much longer than they should be. So, just so you know. <laughs> but we're still gonna plant them out um, so we can have a fall harvest of potatoes. I have about six bags. I have a few bags that's empty, honestly, but we're also gonna move those pepper plants. I told y'all about that in the last video that we're gonna move the pepper plants out of the bed. We may even pull the beans they're looking pretty bad um and start to kind of like fork through just to kind of loosen the soil up a little bit um in the beds we may go ahead and fork through that a little bit tonight um also i am putting some garden tone granulated fertilizer into these bags because i haven't fertilized in i don't know how long i'm gonna be honest with y'all i just watered these bags really good so that once the potatoes go in here they'll continue to be moist and of course i will have to water some more i'm making sure i get the sides of the bags because the sides of the bags stay dry so you want to make sure you kind of move the soil around to make sure all of the soil is moist uh but i did a pretty good job with these um which i'm excited about because i did not want to have to water again so I'm just pulling the dry dirt into the moist dirt soil. <laughs> I always say that. Um, granulated fertilizer, it's gonna take some time to break down and it'll feed the plant throughout the season. And so that's what I do to my bags to amend them. Now you can use blood meal, bone meal, that kind of stuff too. Um, I'm going to stick with fish emulsion and comfrey tea but you can put whatever you like in your bag that's going to feed the plant plant for the next set of uh for the next season and so i don't know what potatoes these are let's see so this is a kennebec and so those are the sprouts those aren't too bad on the potato and that's where your plant is going to come from so i normally put like two to four potatoes in the bag um, I'm probably going to do two this time just to see if I get a better potato harvest. My potatoes did really good in the spring. So I'm going to do two and I'm just going to drop it down in the bag like this with this part up. If I have a bigger potato, I'm going to cut that sprout off. Um, but if they're small, I'm just going to drop them down in here like that one. Drop it down into the bag. And eventually, they will pop up. These will be ready late fall. Uh, potatoes take like 90 to 100 days, I believe. Something like that. <laughs> um, I'm not labeling them, because I don't care. 
but yeah we got to get these out according to my planting chart it is the last day these are superiors a little bit longer than we kind of want them but it's all right we're gonna drop them down in here see what happens that one isn't too bad all right so that's what we're doing i need to go get some gloves but i had to go back to the nail shop one of them broke and this one the design is chipping i know what happened y'all <laughs> so this is one bag that we want to go ahead and amend and so like i said i watered it really well but i'm going around the sides so you can see like right there it's a lot of dry soil so we're just going to go around the sides, pull the dry soil into the middle where the moisture soil is. And then try to go down to the bottom because, you know, the bottom of the bag is drier. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And then we're just going to dig down in the middle, pour in some of the granulated fertilizer. And then we're going to mix it into the soil. And once they start coming up, I'll start fertilizing with fish emulsion and eventually with comfrey tea. And we should get some, we should get some uh, potatoes by the end of fall. Assuming the bugs and stuff don't eat them. <laughs> Let's see, that's more Kennebec. There's a red one, a red Pontiac. Those are way longer than we'd like, but we're putting them out. I left them in the bags over the season. So it's probably got something to do with it, but there we go. We planted out our potatoes in all three of these bags. There are more bags over here on the other side and we're gonna plant out over there too. So we grew tomatoes in these bags throughout the fall. I've never had an issue with this replanting, re-amending and replanting and so what I'm gonna do this year by the way if I haven't told you which I have I haven't told you this month <laughs> about my home and garden trend stool um, it is a stool and a kneeler so you can sit on it or you can kneel on it uh, for the purposes of tonight I'm going to kneel on it uh, to get these potatoes in but if you're interested in one uh, I'll put a link below for you I really love this thing like especially when I'm getting down and planting and things like that like it's a little wet out here tonight because it drizzled but didn't rain um, I don't have to be on the wet soil and it helps me to stand up too so yeah I love this little thing it's one of those things that I didn't know I needed until I got it there's a lizard on my on my fence <laughs> and you really should measure you really should measure I don't and haven't had an issue so far <laughs> and I am in zone 7b in Virginia in case you're new here um, that's where I'm located and so we have a long growing season my first frost November the 1st in case you are near me or even in a zone higher than me you know you still have time plant out potatoes and I'm still gonna go back and water again just to make sure the soil is moist this one I did not do a great job at water someone had asked me do I deal with my plants getting root bound in bags I don't um, because the bags should air prune then the roots don't try to grow around the bags that's what the bag should do um, if you're not experiencing that, you may want to try different bags. I'll link the bags that I'm using if, in case anyone's interested. Before I plant any more potatoes, we're going to move the peppers um, to make sure we have enough bags. If there's any other bags. Originally, I said I wasn't going to plant in the bags behind the roseo, but what am I going to lose by planting? Either they're going to grow or they won't but they might and then I'll already have them planted. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to start taking out these peppers out of this bed. Um, just gonna dig around them. 
to get as much of the soil as we can. Not the soil, the roots. <laughs> Very dry down there. Very dry down there. <laughs> I have not watered this bag yet, but I'll come back through. It's pretty moist though. Well, it has some moisture in it. I don't want to say it's pretty moist. So this is what fall looks like for me because I have a small space. I use what I already have to move things out of the beds and into other places that way I um, can keep some of my long growing summer plants. I do this with uh, like Swiss chard and stuff in the, in the spring when it's time to plant out my winter stuff too. I just move it. Most times they take. So we're gonna plop this pepper down in here. We don't wanna have it any deeper than it was in the soil. So we're just popping it down at the same depth. And then I'm gonna come back and water it in. There'll be some transplant shock, just like the ones we did earlier this summer, but they should bounce back. And I know I should not walk on my beds. I don't, I don't get these moved. So it's cool. Oh, all kinds of stuff running out of this bag. Glad I decided to get some gloves. Good gracious. A lizard came out. I don't know what that other thing was. So I had originally said that I was gonna leave this bed and I was gonna fill it back up. So this is where all of the borage <laughs> self-sewed, but I'm planning on doing garlic in here and I do, will not be planting my garlic until very late in the season this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant some potatoes in here. I think it'll be pretty, like if they grow <laughs> as they should. I think it'll be pretty and it'll be full of like greenery. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant potatoes in here as well. Potatoes are pretty much over here, which is not my normal way of planting. I like to plant things all around so that if something finds it, it doesn't find all of it. Didn't do that this time, we'll see how it works. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye y'all.